This is a quick video introduction to the systematic treatment of equilibrium problems. This material is in the second half of chapter 7 in your analytical chemistry textbook. When we talk about the systematic treatment of equilibrium, uh, we're talking about a process for analyzing equilibrium systems that are not straightforward. And this happens when there are simultaneous equilibria present, uh, where either a product or reactant in one equilibrium is also participating in another equilibrium at the same time. So for example, if we want to figure out the molar solubility of calcium fluoride, uh, we have to worry about, first of all, this equilibrium right here, and it's KSP. Uh, so we have some KSP for the calcium fluoride in equilibrium with its ions, and so we can just solve this, and we already saw how to do that. But what if we also want to account for the fact that this fluoride ion can also participate in another equilibrium, so that its concentration is not as straightforward as it was in that previous KSP equation. We have to account for both of these equilibria at the same time using both of their equilibrium constants uh, in order to actually get an accurate picture of the molar solubility of calcium fluoride. So the way that we do that is with this systematic treatment of equilibrium. So the general steps for this, first of all, write the set of balanced equations for all of the pertinent equilibria. So in the previous slide, it would be both the calcium fluoride dissolving and the HF equilibrium. Then we need to write a couple of balancing equations. We need to write the charge balance and the mass balance for the system. Then we need to write expressions for the equilibrium constants for all the reactions. Uh, in terms of activities, if appropriate, often we'll just ignore this, especially if the concentrations are low. We have to figure out the number of equations and the number of unknowns. So linear algebra tells us that we, have to, we can't have more unknowns than we have equations. Uh, and if possible, we need to solve for the, whatever we want. In that ex previous example, it was the molar solubility of calcium fluoride. So first, let's talk about how to do a mass balance. A mass balance is based on the idea of conservation of matter, uh, which says that the sum of all species containing a given atom must equal the total amount of the atom delivered to the solution. For example, if we dissolve some phosphoric acid in water, we can do a mass balance for the phosphate ion. So the, the uh, equilibrium expression is here, and the mass balance for the phosphate ion is going to say that those 0.25 moles of phosphate-containing species contain all 0.25 moles. Uh, in other words, the ways, the ways that a phosphate can be distributed, uh, it can be in either phosphoric acid or singly, doubly, or triply deprotonated phosphoric acid. So in any of these uh, th four species, all of which contain the phosphate ion. The sum of those four concentrations needs to be 0.25 molar because we're limited by the amount of phosphate that was initially delivered to the system. So now we've, in, we've added another equation to our system. We have our balanced chemical equation, and now we have a mass balance. This tells us something about the relationship between some of these species. We can add an additional equation by making the charge balance. And the charge balance is based on the idea that the solution overall doesn't contain a net charge. So the sum of all the positive charges from positive ions must equal the sum of all the negative charges from negative ions. And so if we look back at the phosphate system, we have our balanced chemical equation. And now this gets a little bit tricky because the charge balance does not look balanced. When you make the charge balance, you put the positive ions on one side and the negative ions on the other side and add them together with coefficients that are determined not by the stoichiometric coefficients but by the charge on the ion. The reason for this is that, for example, Every mole of the phosphate ion contributes three moles of negative charge. Every mole of protons contributes one mole of positive charge. So in order to balance, you need to have more hydrogen than you do phosphate. Uh, this is not a mass balance equation, so you need to not think about it in terms of stoichiometric coefficients. Think about it in terms of the amount of charge that each ion brings into the system. Okay, so back to our systematic treatment of equilibria. We've written balanced chemical equations, we've written a charge and a mass balance, and then the last thing is that we need to figure out expressions for the equilibrium constants for all pertinent reactions, and so we already know how to do this. Once we've done that, we have to figure out if the number of equations matches or exceeds the number of unknowns, and then we can solve. 
So we can look back at this calcium fluoride solubility revisited. Uh, the first step is to write the pertinent equilibria. So we had two, and there's technically a third, depending on whether our concentrations are low enough. This might be relevant or not, uh, which is the water ionization. The other two are obviously pertinent because uh, the calcium fluoride and related species participate in them. We can write a charge balance. Uh, so the, the positive ions in this case are the, is the calcium cation and uh, the hydrogen ion, the proton. The negative ions are the fluoride and hydroxide. And so we just write the charge balance. The only multiple uh, is on the calcium. It's multiplied by two because that's a doubly charged ion. The mass balance we can write in terms of the calcium fluoride, or just we can think about it just in terms of the fluoride. So all fluoride delivered to the solution comes from calcium fluoride. Uh, and so for every fluoride ion that we have, we need to have two calciums. So the mass balance is going to look like this. Calcium containing species on one side, fluoride containing species on the other side with the understanding that all of this comes from calcium fluoride. So we have, and then we can write out the equilibrium constant expressions. Uh, what Ksp actually equals in terms of calcium and fluoride, what Kb equals in terms of Hf, F minus, and OH minus, etc. Uh, and so we have three equations from the equilibrium constants. We have a charge balance and we have a mass balance. So we have five equations and we have five unknowns, the concentrations of calcium ion, fluoride ion, F minus, OH minus, and H plus. And so we can solve this system of equations. That's the systematic treatment of equilibrium in a nutshell.